Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and it's time for episode 11 of the Stadium 2 playthrough. I'm going to finish this quickly, then go for a swim. Pokemon Stadium 2, to be precise. As we're going through the Challenge Cup Master Ball difficulty here in the main stadium section of the game, we lost earlier today against Swimmer Darcy right here. We're going for a second attempt against her to try to get a win because we're in the point where the computer decides, you know what, random chance? We don't like random chance. We're giving ourselves the best chance percentages. We're giving the computer, or giving the human player, the worst chance percentages. Anyway, the team I have is Scizor, Zatu, Golem, Blastoise, Jolteon, and Muck. They are, of course, in the Challenge Cup, computer players, or computer Pokemon, given to you. You don't get to choose who you're bringing in. You gotta work with who they give you. And based on the last fight, Snorlax was the biggest problem we had to face. So I'm gonna lead Golem. If they lead the Nidoking again, which they did last time, and Critical hit us with Earthquake, which you can't predict, I'm going to, I think, bring the Zot to... I'm gonna switch in immediately to... I could go setting up with some Swords Dances with our Scizor. Go for some Metal Claws. Alright, Scizor, you're coming in. First idea, if we do see one of the more defensive Pokémon, like Glissy or Snorlax, go for the Toxic. And I might even switch out at that point into our Scizor. But let's see who they lead with. Do we see the Nidoking? No, we see Heracross, a fighting type, which means it's time to switch. We're going into our Zatu. Can Heracross learn rock moves in Gen 2? Off the top of my head, I can't think of any that it could learn. But if it can, we're about to find out. Goes for a Mega Horn, we double resist that. No wait, we don't, it's neutral. Come on, really? Already? Let's confuse it. We are faster. That is fine, you can endure. So, they went Mega Horn. A fighting move would be neutral to our Scizor, but I think our safest bet is just to go to Scizor right now. Hopefully the confusion will pull through. Now, we do have one extra continue in reserve. We did have to... Why are they switching? I guess, well, they don't want to risk the confusion. But we did, or did have to use one of the two continues that we got last episode just to fight this person again. And there's the Snorlax. So we saw that it had Hyper Beam. What else was it using against us? I should try to remember these things. But we know we can resist the Hyper Beam. We can go for some massive Swords Dances here. Would it... No, it has Blizzard as well, but would it have anything like Fire Blast? You know what? It probably got Fire Blast. Let's wait for the Fire Blast. No, it's got a track, though. And based on how much it was working for us last episode, I'm going to say we're probably not going to land a single hit from here on out. But... We're gonna try our best. We're gonna go with the Steel Wing right now. I should probably try to set up a second Swords Dance, though. Oh, we break through. Excellent. Critical hit! Critical hit. Now it goes. All right, then. That was very unexpected. Now, hopefully the computer realizes how mean it was being to me last time, and they're like, you know what? No, we, we, we gotta even things out for you here. So this could have Fire Blast, though. We're going to go for another Steel Wing. I'm going to say we probably have to miss this one. Would you stop attracting Scizor? It has no effect. Didn't you see Snorlax? Anyway, Scizor is attracted. Yeah, only fair. So Earthquake, of course, is going to be a problem. Uh, i got to stay in, though. There's no really no, I can, no one I can switch to. Zatu is pretty much done. There's the Earthquake. Though... I could switch to Zatu now, because we'd be immune to the Earthquake. But let's see how much we do with the Steel Wing. The shot. Heavy hit. Okay, hang on. If I switch out now... Zatu can probably get the KO with the Fly Attack. Let's do that. I'm losing the Swords Dance, but I'm okay with that. If Scizor has to come back in, Quick Attack can probably drop Nidoking. Let's see what we do here. Go for the Fly. And Heracross is the final Pokemon, which we could confuse Ray for starters. I could just fly against that, too. Alright, we might be in a good spot here. Go for the Fly Attack. See, I said, I think in the last episode, I would have preferred if Zatu had, like, you know, Psychic or something like that, not Future Sight. But the computer decides, you know what? You're going to make better use of Future Sight, and you're going to like it. And how wrong they were, I don't like it whatsoever. Can... 
We land the fly. I was like, what's happening there? <laughs> Neither of us is choosing an attack. One's thrashing, the other one's flying. Okay, we land it. Needle King falls. I'm pretty sure Zatu will be faster than Nido or not Nido King Heracross based on how much wills Zatu is outspeeding us in the Elite Four. If I am correct, we outspeed and go for a fly attack. As long as it lands, it is a KO. Wait for it. Endure. Excellent. Use that now before it has a chance to really have an effect on the battle. So up we go. If we land this and knock out the Heracross, we get our continue back. Come on. 95% accurate, I think. The Endure fails. It's all building up to this. Let's do it. Oh, critical hit. Unnecessary. But I kind of liked it. What was that all about? I really don't know. That was random chance given to me. We broke through a lot of uh, contractions in that. We landed a lot of decent hits. We got pretty good criticals. That critical steel wing, though, really. Snorlax, one shot. Man. Anyhow, Darcy is done. You're really wild. I'm surprised. All right, we got ourselves the fog badge. Four trainers left to go. Hopefully, minimal difficulty on the way through so I can get this done in a decent, timely amount of time, maybe a half-hour episode. As we see, we're into the second half of the tournament against a officer. Even we officers can participate. After all, I'm on my break. Fair enough. You got yourselves a lot of fire types, a lot of grass types. Hmm. So, of course, the grass type scares us. Uh... Grass and poison, so I was thinking muck with sludge would be okay. Well, we would resist both of them. And the water or the fire types, we can deal with our Blastoise. Now, I was fighting a Hound Hour in an earlier version of the Challenge Cup, and in this generation, they can learn Solar Beam. Fun fact. So, I want to keep that in mind. I will lead Muck. I am going to bring Blastoise. And how to deal with the rest? I think probably Zatu might be the best. We can get some fly attacks on the grass types and just basic confusion and stuff on the fire types. Let's see what we can do here. Leading off with Muck, the poison type. Lead with the Meganium. That's my perfect setup right here. That is the least perfect setup. Would they have updated Ninetales to be able to learn Solar Beam in this generation? I don't know. I'm going to switch to Blastoise anyhow. We can go for the Waterfall. We also go for the Attract first. We have male versus female here. And if Ninetales could learn Solar Beam, I think that's the only possible grass attack it could get. But would it go for it against a Poison type? I don't think so. This is a problem. If it can get Solar Beam, we're probably about to lose our Blastoise. Now, of course, the Ninetales will be faster, but if we can land the Attract and survive a hit here, Flamethrower. Alright, so if it has Solar Beam, it ain't going for it. The sun-boosted flamethrower does practically nothing to our Blastoise. We land a tract on the Ninetales. Now, our water moves, I believe Sunny Day cuts water moves in damage by half. But we still get some nice stab, super effective damage off with the waterfall. Let's go for that. Hopefully Ninetales will start losing some turns to the attraction. Not that one. They might also get a burn on us, but thankfully Waterfall and all water moves are based on special stat in this generation, so a burn would not weaken the damage of Waterfall. If the sun was enough, this would be a two-hit KO. But if we are lucky and the attract does pull through for us, we can probably take this thing down with minimal damage on our Blastoise. Breaks through again, all right. I'm not gonna be upset about that because we did pretty well with the attraction in the last battle. That I'm gonna be upset about if I don't get a critical in response. They've landed a critical on me, they owe me a critical now. All right, you know what I will do though? I will accept an attract a, uh, attack loss due to a trap. I will take that. Hand me that at least. Thank you. Waterfall should be a KO, maybe? It might not. I'm going to bite you now. Let's do it. I should have gone for Ice Punch in case I switched to a Grass type. 50-50 chance, alright. Two turns lost to attraction, two turns broke through. I'm happy with that. The Ninetales falls. I should probably try to preserve Blastoise in case another fire type comes in, but if they have the Houndoom, it's not really going to help. Of course, it has Solar Beam, or it most likely has Solar Beam. Meganium comes in, which is a switch out into our Poison-type Muck. 
There we go. Go for the sludge, possible poison. If not, we can resist the grass attack coming our way. I'm pretty sure Muck has pretty good special defense. Muck and Weezing have always been sort of like almost counterparts to each other. Weezing, I believe, is more physically defensive. Muck has more on the special side for defense. Giga Drain, watch how little this does. We got 84, 284. We're down to 264. Yeah, 20 damage. I don't think, well, Meganium can learn Earthquake, but it is not very physically offensive, so we are probably pretty safe here. Sunny Day, would you be going for a Solar Beam? I don't think they would give it Solar Beam and Giga Drain. But they could, and it could surprise me, but even if they have Solar Beam, we resist it. We get the Poison on the Sludge, so one more Sludge brings down the Meganium. Oh, never mind, but, well, based on the damage, we still get the KL. That one did uh, 120 damage. Let's do this. Let's see what happens. Surprise. Iron Tail. Not super effective. A light tap. <laughs> a light tap, indeed. All right, so Sludge brings Meganium down. And if we are lucky, we can get another continue off of this trainer. Depending on what the final Pokemon is, it might be another one of the grass types, maybe grass poison. They could also have one of the other fire types. What else was there? The Houndoom. What else do they have? I can't even remember. There's Victory Bell, though. All right. So, we resist both of your stab attacks. We can't learn ground attacks from what I'm aware of. Let's just go for the Sludge. Stab, neutral. Solar Beam. All right, then. That was a critical, too. We handled that quite nicely. Hopefully, the sun is going to fade momentarily. A pretty powerful Sludge attack off. Sun is still strong, so I'm going to probably, I think, switch now into our Zatu. Because I don't want to risk a critical hit knocking Muck down. Zatu can at least take one Solar Beam, possibly a critical one also. I can go for the Fly Attack. I could even go for Confuse Ray next. It's weird how they took the name Victory Bell and... See how it's like, uh, they sort of broke it into syllables? Victory E Bell. That didn't do much at all. The Sun is still up. Do they have... What is that item? Heat Rock in this? I'm just going to go for the Fly Attack. We outspeed the Victory Bell. There's no Chlorophyll ability, of course. No abilities whatsoever. We are faster. Victory Bell's defense is not good. So we could possibly get a KO here with this. I said this, I think, in a previous episode of either this or Stadium 1. But it's funny how the Solar Beam still misses because we're in the air, but they still, the animation aims it upward at Zatsu in the air. So we land Fly Attack. No, we don't land Fly Attack. It's powering up Solar Beam again. We can easily fly and dodge that. All right, then. Let's do that. I can also protect if I really wanted to. In fact, hang on. If I miss another fly, I might protect against the Solar Beam next turn and then just throw a Future Sight out there. But I'm putting faith in the fly attack. We should be able to get this taken down. Come on. Land this hit. Yes! Alright, so that is a continue. Not bad. That leaves, I believe, three trainers left to go. And this episode might go a little bit long, but I think I said in the first episode today, I don't want to have another cliffhanger episode of Stadium 2. I want to try to get this Challenge Cup completed today, if possible. So we managed to get a perfect on that one. Officer Gerald is complete. You're a tough one. Would you care to join the police force? I've got so many more Pokemon Leagues to conquer in my lifetime. Unfortunately, no. Police Force is not on my list of things to do. Three trainers left. Next one up is a Kimono Girl. A battle? That sounds rather frightening. They can be. Oh, we see... Well, I can't really see Muck, but we see Muck on the opposing side. We also see some power in Alakazam. Theraligator, Kangaskhan, Ninetales, and Umbreon as well. So, possibly... Possibly what? Scizor might be okay. The Ninetales would be scared, but I can switch into Blastoise. So I'm going to lead with Scizor and start setting up for some Swords Dances. Blastoise is our runner-up idea. Uh, hmm. I think maybe Golem also. For, I can Toxic the Umbreon. Try to whittle it down a little bit. Let's see this. I might want to, if possible, if I have a chance to set up, go for a plus six attack, three Swords Dance on Scizor. Just try to clean through the opponents. Kangaskhan. I think that's a pretty decent lead. Now, would they have taught it Fire Punch? I really hope not. 
Let's go ahead and start off with a Swords Dance and see what they go for. Mega Punch. We resist that. All right, it is Stab, of course, but that was a critical hit, too. We handled that quite nicely. Let's get our attack stat up and boosted. I want to go for at least one more before the Kangas before we start launching attacks on the Kangaskhan. Let's do this. Another Mega Punch. They have a chance to miss, I think, or is it Mega Kick that has the not full accuracy? Either way, we survived that one. Swords Dance, we're at plus four attack now. Now's the time to start launching some retaliation strikes against Kangaskhan. Starting off with the Steel Wing. I think when uh, Steel type was first introduced in Gen 2, there was only three attacks. Steel Wing, Metal Claw, and Iron Tail, and none of them are fully accurate. Steel Wing is like, I think, 85% accuracy? Serious damage. Alright, I hung in there, but we can go for that quick attack and get the KO now. But yeah, it's kind of weird that they gave us only three Steel-type attacks, and none of them had full accuracy. Quick attack, boom, brings Kangaskhan down. Two Pokémon remaining. Can Scizor pick up a sweep? That was a terrible performance. I'm sorry. It actually wasn't bad. You got a critical Mega Punch on your first hit. Alright, in is... For Alligator, which will resist the Steel Wing. I might want to just go for it anyway. It's our stab move. It's our most powerful move. I want to see how much damage it's going to do. This will hurt, though. We survived it, though. Can we land steel and get some good damage off? Please, Scizor. No, but I'm going to go for a quick attack now, just to get off as much damage before we fall, because I'm sure for Alligator will go for a fully accurate move at this point, just to get the KL. Come on, critical hit! Nope. Wait a minute, they could miss. They missed! Alright, quick attack will bring down for Alligator. Scizor could still pull this one through for us. Alright, for Alligator does fall to the quick attack. What would we want to see next? Hmm. I don't want to see Alakazam, I'll just say that right now. Something weak to steal if you brought it? I can't remember. Umbreon. Who would be faster? I know Umbreon is quite slow, but then so is Scizor. I want to get off as much damage as I can. I'm just going to go quick attack in case we aren't faster. And I can bring Golem in next. I think I brought Golem. Go for the Toxic. And what do you go for against us? Confuse Ray. Hang on. We might still have a chance to do some more damage. I'm going to keep Scizor in. Uh, or should I switch? I'm thinking I'm going to switch out. I do have all those Swords Dances I'm losing right now, but I do save Scizor for a possible Quick Attack KO at the end if I need to. The idea right now is switching into Golem and go for the Toxic. Start getting some residual damage on Umbreon, some increasing damage every turn. Faint Attack. Now you're not very offensive. We don't have good special defense, but we do handle that one pretty okay. Start off with the Toxic. Good, you didn't confuse me. So as long as we can land the Toxic, and then start going for the Mud Slaps, lower accuracy, will it affect Feign Attack? No, of course not. But any other move it has, we can try to lower the accuracy and start dodging some attacks. So looking at the time, we might have time to finish up the last two trainers also. I'm hoping so. So Feign Attack pulls through once again. We take the hit. I think we have like three continues right now, so I don't think I need to preserve for any more continues. At least I hope I don't. But I might just want to stay in, just keep going for as much damage as we can. Look how little damage we actually do to the Umbreon. So the accuracy fades a little bit. We're going to go for just one more Mud Slap. I can probably safely switch into Blastors after this, though. Just to preserve Golem, if necessary. Might be the best way to go. Lower the Umbreon's accuracy. It's kind of surprising they didn't go for the Confuse Ray against our Golem, though. But I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I will be very grateful that we managed to get all of these much slaps off. Going to our full HP Blastoise. What can we do to this? Just go for Waterfall, I suppose. Can't attract it. We're both male, so that wouldn't help. Ice Punch, we can't freeze it. Yeah, Waterfall is the best way to go. Bite, of course, is resistant. And I don't think we would outspeed for possible flinching either. Although we might give it a try. So I think one more poison damage is going to bring the Umbreon down regardless. Yes, it will. Because it increases every turn thanks to Toxic. Let's just see what Bite would do. And our Blastoise is faster. 
I always underestimate Sheldon's speed. I'm underestimating this Blastoise's speed here also. No flinch. Confused Ray, does it land? It doesn't. Not that it matters. Poison brings Umbreon down. Yes, that is, I think, four continues under our belt. All right. Two trainers remaining in the Challenge Cup. I don't remember how far I made it back when I was a kid playing through this. But, you know, I don't think I made it to the Master Ball difficulty. Definitely. And down goes Emiko, the Kimono Girl. I don't like inflexible, pe inflexible people like you. I don't want to know you. Farewell. Have a nice life, then. Two trainers remain to complete the Master Ball difficulty. Yes, we got four continues. Let's see if we can breeze through this quickly. We have a Lab Man as our semi-final opponent. I was cooped up in the lab. I need a break. I needed a break, so here I am. You got some pretty decent Pokemon there. You got non and Executor, plus some others. Vaporeon and Umbreon, it looked like. Zatu, Kangaskhan, and Gengar. I don't think we see any potential for fire attacks. Maybe setting up with Scizor is another good way to go. I'm going to lead Scizor. His biggest problems would probably be, say, the Vaporeon, so I could bring Jolteon for some super effective, if we land the Thunder. And, hmm, what else might be a bit of a problem? Umbreon again could be an issue. I could bring Golem and go for the Toxic. I'm going to do that. I'll bring Golem. Let's try this. We have four continues. The downside, I don't want to use too many continues because it's going to make the video longer than I really want to. I'm trying to aim for about a half hour. We're looking kind of on par for that. We can finish these last two battles in about five minutes apiece. All right, Scizor leads against the Vaporeon. Now, you're more defensive, so I don't think there's really too much that you can do to us. We might have some time to start setting up a lot of our sword stances. We are faster, which is good. We're going to outspeed when we finally go for a non-quick attack type of attack. I could even try Fury Cutter and see if I can start building the power up of that. Surf, now that would be powerful, but you're not very offensive, are you? You're offensive enough, though. Hmm. So, given that, there's really nobody I can safely switch in. Hmm, what will we do? I'm going to go for a Fury Cutter right now. Just see how much damage we could do. Look at the HP on this Vaporeon also. Over 300. That did, like, nothing. So, if I switch Jolteon in, how much damage would it take from a Surf? Hmm. I'm going to try that. We can preserve Scizor for... No, you know what? I'm going to stick with the Fury Cutter. We have some power built up. If we land another one, we'll get some more damage off. And bring Jolteon in for free. Not bad. I do think a Thunder, if it lands, will finish Vaporeon at that range. But we got to land that Thunder. Scizor falls to the Surf Attack. Not quite the sweep we had last time, but you had your moment to shine in that last battle, Scizor. Take a nice rest in the Pokeball as hopefully Jolteon cleans up the remainder of this Vaporeon. I could also bring Muck on a second attempt if I need to. We have that Thunder Punch. Alright, Thunder away. Come on, land, land, land. Here it comes, Thunder! Whoop, that missed. Gee, we weren't missing already. So, Sand Attack lowers the accuracy. I'm gonna risk one more Thunder, though. I could switch to Golem, but that's an easy one-hit KO when the incoming Surf brings him down. Come on, come on, you can get this. Yes, alright. Vaporeon falls. Now, since we are Sand Attacked, I'm probably gonna want to switch Jolteon out. Hopefully, something comes in that slot. You know, maybe not the, uh... Executor, because we'll just lose Golem in that case. Okay, so what can we do? Nothing. We're going to cancel, we're going to switch into Golem, for whatever good that's going to do us. I think as long as we can land a Toxic, I'm going to have to go back into Jolteon, of course, once Golem faints, and just try to flinch this thing out with Headbutts as we let the Toxic build up. I can't think of anything else to do. So the double team, of course, is going to make things less likely to hit. I think we're looking at the first of our four continues being used as we speak. Now, of course, I'm sure Executor is going to be faster. 
Go for Solar Beam. Hmm. We got the Toxic. Do I let Golem fall here, or do I preserve it? I think Jolteon might survive. I'm gonna switch to Jolteon. It might be able to survive a Solar Beam. If it does, I can then start going for the headbutts and try to flinch. And if Solar Beam is all that this Executor has to really hurt Golem, we'll have one shot if Jolteon falls and Golem comes back in to maybe go for a Mud Slap and lower the accuracy. Alright, we hung in there. Poison damage on the Executor. Let's start trying to headbutt this thing and whittle it down. We can't attract it. We could in Actually, if it goes for Solar Beam again, we could endure that hit. Let's try for a flinch. Come on, you can do this, Jolteon. There's a flinch, I think. Yep, flinch. And poison damage builds up. We're going to go for another flinch. Let's do that. I was going to go for Endure, but if I Endure now and then they start charging Solar Beam, there's a chance I'll fail the Endure on the following turn. So It's kind of a risky strategy, but i got to keep going for these uh, headbutts. There's a Solar Beam. I can Endure that. We might be able to pull through this Executor. Okay, endure the Solar Beam. And good, some good poison damage off the Executor afterwards. Okay, how much does the poison do to it? Hmm. One more turn of poison brings it down. I'm going to switch into Golem. I don't think they would charge up a Solar Beam at this point. Even if they did, they're going to faint before they can fire it off. The poison will bring them down. Hopefully they don't go for anything like, you know, super not super effective, but anything super powerful against a low special defense golem. Confusion, that's not psychic. That's all right. Light tap, excellent. Poison brings the Jagatory down. Okay, we have a chance to toxic one more thing. Is it going to be the Umbreon? What is this phenomenon? This is what we call kind of just luck on my part. Last Pokemon in. It is the Umbreon. We can talk to that and just try to stall it out. Oh, come on, can we land this toxic? Please, we need to get this. Curse. So you're slowing yourself down. Not bad, not bad. We got the toxic. All right. Now that it is slow, I think we'll outspeed and I can go for the mud slaps. Try just to lower the accuracy on this. Come on. Let's do this. Leave a comment down below, folks. Root on for me. Come on, root me on. See if we can manage to pull through this. Faint attack. So, no point in boosting your attack, but you did boost your defense. So, that's kind of what the curse was there for. I don't think Payback was a move in this generation. And I was just talking about how they added Steel-type moves. Only three of them in the second generation when steel type became a thing. I don't know how many dark type attacks that they put in. There's faint attack. They turned bite from normal into dark. Other than that, I can't think offhand what else there might have been. Alright, so we gotta... I don't know. <sighs> so they're just going for the basic... Uh, faint attack. I'm just going to go for a powerful rollout. I don't, well, of course, lowering the accuracy is not going to help at all. So let's just see how much damage we can get with rollout. Nothing. And faint attack brings Golem down. No, it doesn't. So we have one more turn of rollout. The only problem, though, the Umbreon will not take poison damage when it knocks out Golem. Yes! Critical breaks through the curse! Oh, boy. <laughs> I was thinking, what do I do when Jolteon comes in? I'm at 1 HP. I could headbutt for a chance to flinch. I could try Thunder, hopefully not miss, and hope it does enough damage. But Golem pulls through with a critical rollout at that last turn. Oh, man. Well, I sneaked out of the lab for this. The Chief's going to chew me out again. You should never have done that, sir. Last trainer, and yes, this is pushing the episode a little bit longer than I like to go, but I've got four continues. I have a chance to pull through this and win it today and end off without a cliffhanger. Let's do this against Old Man. Ah, you look determined. Would you care to join me in a battle? Yes, I would. 
I see another Snorlax. But let's lead with, hang on. I'm thinking maybe Golem. Maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna lead Golem. We can Toxic something. Um, may, well, what could do all that Steelix the best? Obviously the Blastoise could do that the best. I could also Mud Slap with Golem though. But I also want to bring, I'm thinking Jolteon for some Thunder on the Zatu or Cloyster. Scizor might not be bad as well. Who am I bringing already? Golem, Jolteon. Blastoise is nice and defensive though. We have Ice Punch for a couple of these things too. I can, yeah, I'm gonna bring Blastoise for our first attempt. And if I do need to use a continue, or several continues, I'm probably just going to come back and show you the final battle. I don't want to waste too much time in this video. If I lose this first attempt, I'll come back and show you either the winning attempt or the last of my continues being used up. And of course, that's an immediate switch out. We're not leaving a goal limit against no victory bell. Did I bring the Zatu? No, I brought nothing to really deal with this victory bell. Jolteon, it's all up to you, buddy. Hmm. Pokemon. You can't even attract this thing. I can just headbutt and try for some flinching. Oh, Didn't really plan for the victory bell, so this is the first failed attempt, we're going to say. Vine Whip? The first move. This is round one of Stadium 2, isn't it? Yeah, there's, <laughs> there should be a lot more powerful attacks coming our way. Hmm. I could try Thunder and hope for Paralysis, too. I'm just going to go headbutt, though. See if we can flinch this out. This is uh, another remix of the Rival theme, too, isn't it? Kind of like when we had the music against Champion Lance. Ooh, that's going to be painful. Alright, so they went for Sludge Bomb. Would they do that again? And here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to switch to our Blastoise. If I go Sludge Bomb now, that's not the worst thing. We have pretty good defense. I go for some Ice Punching. We might be faster, because I always underestimate the speed of a Blastoise. Even if they go for the super effective Grass Attack, it's only Vine Whip. So I don't think it's going to do too much for us to worry about. Sludge Bomb. You might get a poison on us here, though. That was more powerful than I would have thought. And they did get the poison. We got to go for the Ice Punch. Come on, are we faster? We are faster. Can we freeze? We can freeze. But not in that particular hit. Okay, if we can survive a Vine Whip, we'll get another Ice Punch off. Oh, there go Sludge Bomb. I guess that would be the more powerful hit. So let's just do that Ice Punch. We're probably going to lose the Blastoise in the process, but Jolteon could come in. Wait a minute. Oh, man. All right, so Blastoise is our best way to not finish the Picture Bell, but at least deal some good damage to it. Snorlax comes in. I'm going to switch to our Golem next and Toxic this. Because, uh, I almost said Sheldon. Because Blastoise was faster than the Victory Bell. Was it? I think it was. Alright, Golem come in here. Toxic this Snorlax. See if we can get some residual damage on it each turn. This is really, really tense stuff. Come on now. Sorry if I go quiet a little bit here, but... I'm focused on what I have to do. Body Slam. They get the poison on Sludge Bomb. Oh, never mind. I was going to complain. I, I can still complain. They got poison on Sludge Bomb, and they managed to get the Paralysis on Body Slam. The Body Slam thing is more likely to happen anyway, but the Miracle Berry, the Lum Berry of Gen 2, manages to help us out there. Should I complain about that? I probably shouldn't. We are done here. There's nothing we can really do to pull this one around, unfortunately. All I can do... Thunder, Paralysis, lose every turn possible to Paralysis at this point. Or not. Alright. It comes down to Blastoise. Critical Waterfall. Super Flinch, maybe? So, nope, because of course the poison takes us out. So we're just basically done. I'm going to just land a hit anyway. And as we 
fall to this opponent, you'll see me coming back momentarily as we get the victory, or use our last continue. But bear with me here. Let's just see what we can do before we go down. Nothing. Nothing. We can do nothing. All right, then. Go ahead. Poison. You can't even land a hit on us, Snorlax. You're not worth it. No, we're taking the poison down with us. Forgive you? No, I'm not actually mad. I mean, it's like, this is more, it's not like my Pokemon failing in battle. It is the computer-generated Pokemon they gave me. So, you know, I'm kind of accepting that. But what I'm not accepting is the fact that I don't yet have the trophy from this thing. I forgot about my age and became serious. I owe it all to you. You're welcome. So... Come on back in a little bit as we take on the last attempt. And you know what? I'm going to stop recording and start up again. I might actually be beating it on the uh, second attempt. So anyway, I'm coming right back in just a moment. All right, this is our second attempt at the old man. What was your name again, sir? I don't even remember. I didn't pay attention. It is Travis. All right, Travis who travels around. Attempt number two. Last time we lost to the Snorlax and the Victory Bell. Um... I'm gonna try... Don't know. I could lead with the Jolteon. You know what? I'm gonna attempt another Scizor sweep. I'll lead with Scizor. The biggest problem Scizor would have would probably, I'd say, be... I don't know. Anything could have some decent neutral damage against it. I wanna go for some defensive Pokemon. I'm gonna bring Muck for special defense and Blastoise for just all-around defense. Let's see if we can pull through attempt number two. And as I just said, I don't know if you're going to see this attempt, we're going to see a later attempt, so anything I'm saying right here and now might not even be visible to the world because it might just be scrapped on the cutting room floor. But hopefully it won't be as we see a scissor come in. Now then, bug and fighting are both resisted by poison, so Muck, you're coming in right now. Heracross, of course, is more on the physical side, so our physical defense is not as good as our special defense on our poison-type Muck here, but I still think it's our best way to go. And Muck, you've got Sludge, you've got Pound, Acid Armor. Actually, yeah, you know what? First of all, it goes for a counter-attack. That's good to know. We can go for Thunder Punch, but first, I'm going to start boosting my physical defense with Acid Armor. If it goes for another counter, I'm going to start launching some Thunder Punches at it. You can't counter those there, buddy. All right, defense goes way up. Counter again, nice. Keep that up. I'm happy to see that. Let's fire off another acid armor. I think two should do the trick because, of course, at any point, the computer could decide I want to land a critical hit against you. Therefore, my plus four defense is going to have no effect. But we have plus four on our defensive side. Our special defense is pretty good, also. Counter, just you keep going right ahead. I'm going to fire off that thunder punch, possible paralysis, with no guts boost to worry about. That's what I kind of like about Gen... I, I much prefer the way it is now, the physical special split of the current generation. But, the, uh... All electric moves being special in this generation, it's working for me in this battle. So I am happy with that. I guess that's kind of a good reason to have both physical and special attacks on Pokémon in this generation, in case they're using Counter or Mirror Coat. Does hardly anything to Muck. We land Thunder Punch. Can we get Paralysis eventually? Not just yet, but we're going to take another... I'm going to say five more Thunder Punches unless we get a critical to bring down the Heracross. Now what scares me is we're going to see a critical hit at some point. I know it. I'm hoping we don't, but you just know we're going to. Yeah, four more Thunder Punches. And is it a 10% chance to paralyze? Because I'm hoping we're going to get Paralysis before we have to go through all these Thunder Punches. Every time that horn fires off, I keep expecting to see Critical. This is just a slugfest back and forth. Alright, come on now. Wait a minute, so since they're going for Mega Horn, should I go for Sludge? That might be the best idea. Because if they don't counter, like, if I get them low enough with Thunder, Sludge could get the knockout. I'm going to try a Sludge right now. Even if they counter it, that's not a lot of damage back to us. Although... It might be enough for a KO. That could be their last Mega Horn, also. Alright, we're still at over half HP. Come on, is this a knockout? Yes, Heracross is down. Alright. And we have a plus four defensive muck on the field right now. Let's see what comes in next if I can make use of that. 
I wonder why there's all those different Pokeballs set up on the field. Are there supposed to be like, multiple battles happening at the same time, maybe? It's Snorlax. So this here... can take a sludge. Let's see if we can pick up a poison on this thing. With our defense where it's at, what would the Snorlax do to us? We got the poison. Miracle Berry, of course, we saw it in the last attempt, though. So we can't get too excited about that. But I did bring Golem to get the Toxic. Body Slam does very little, which is excellent. Let's see if we can pick up a Sludge or a Poison on the Sludge again, but if not, let's just get off as much damage as we can before Muck has to retreat. If we can get the knockout, it's going to be three more Sludge attacks. They might paralyze us before then, though. It's coming down to this. Alright, come on, Muck. Land a Critical. We haven't landed a Critical yet. There's the critical. All right, one more sludge brings it down, but... Ooh, Surf. Is that enough to get a KO at this range? Not at all. So, we are going to finish Snorlax with the sludge attack. That leaves us at three Pokemon remaining. Only one left on the opposing side. Of course, we will lose Muck pretty fast, though. All right, so it's looking like attempt number two might be the one you guys get to see. Which is good. It means I got to save some more time and do some more recordings later on today. Last Pokemon. Something super weak to poison. Something completely immune to poison. And thunder. But. Time for the secret weapon. Pound attack. How much do you think this is going to do? I'm going to say three. No, oh, six. I was half right. And a dig attack. Now. Here's the problem. How exactly do I deal with Steelix? Wait a minute. I brought Blastoise. I thought I brought Golem for a second, but hang on. Leave, we're going to leave Muck in just to get the knockout, or take the hit. Blastoise comes in for pretty much free and starts going for Waterfalls. Now see, if I did have Golem and if it actually had a decent ground attack like Earthquake, then I would be happy with that also. I can hit the Steelix while it's underground. But Blastoise is coming in. And based on Sheldon versus Lance's Steelix, I think we should be outspeeding with our Blastoise here in this Challenge Cup. At least I certainly, certainly hope so. Let's land some Waterfall attacks against the Steelix. Come on, wait for it, wait for it. Yes, our Blastoise is faster. I don't think this is a one-hit KO unless we get a critical. No, it still is there. And it's going for a dig. I'm going to leave the Blastoise in because there's really nothing to fear. I'm just going to go for a oh, waste of Waterfall PP because I'm pretty certain that it's not going to get a KO with one dig attack. Unless maybe if it's critical. But it's not going to be critical. Even if it was critical, it wouldn't have been it. I'm going to call it. This is game right here. And we finished the Challenge Cup in a single day, single episode. Well, two episodes, but... Two episodes in one day is what I'm trying to say. The Steelix Falls. We complete the Master Ball difficulty of the Challenge Cup on our first attempt, too. Nice. I'm accomplishing so much in Stadium 2. I feel like I should have lasted longer in Stadium 1. I shouldn't have given up so quickly. But that is in the past. We are here in the future, or in the present. I feel fortunate to have met someone like you. Traveling is good for me. And that's why they called you Travis. We get the Rising Badge, the final badge here in the Challenge Cup. And we get to see our victorious champions, the Sweeping Scizor right there. We have our Flying Zatu taking down that Heracross. And Golem, what did you do? Yeah, you toxic a bunch of stuff, actually. Muck, man, you just... You Acid Armor destroyed that Heracross. Jolteon, nice thunder attacks landing on everything that you could hit. And once again, it all comes down to a Blastoise. Although it was actually down to a Clefable in the Gym Leader Castle, but... Right here, we get ourselves the trophy for the Challenge Cup Master Ball first try. That is going to wrap up the episodes of Stadium 2 for the weekend. Next weekend, we'll come back and what do you want me to check out? There's the Little Cup we can do. There's the Poke Cup, the Prime Cup. There's also the Kanto Gym Leaders in Gym Leader Castle. So leave a comment down below. First of all, let me know what you thought of today's episode and the battles that we went through and what you're looking forward to in the future and what you'd like to see for next weekend's episodes. And I'll see if I can put the teams together to go in and tackle some of these challenges. So with that, I'm way over time. I'm going to end off quickly. Professor Chaz is signing off, and I'll catch you next time.